Hi guys, it's MJ and in this video I'm going to be continuing my studying journey. Um, this time we're going to be looking at the syllabus objective which says demonstrate knowledge of the influence from government policy over the commercial and economic environment. So we're talking about the government. And uh, <laughs> yeah, lots can be said around um, this organization. Um, what I think is quite interesting is, I mean, governments are elected on how well they can, you know, get the people on their side. So they normally stir up emotions or they're very charismatic characters and they're very much good at getting people to like them. Um, they're not necessarily trained when it comes to economics and finance. So they will sometimes have a financial minister or a, you know, financial department, but at the end of the day, they don't have maybe the best understanding of economic policies, which means when they make certain decisions, it has sometimes undesirable consequences. Uh, I'm going to try hold back though, not go too, too mean when it comes to governments and try maybe focus more around um, the theory. Although, like I said, these are my studying out loud videos, so it is very much opinion based and um, remember to always consult your textbooks for the proper facts. Okay, government policies. What, what are the main types of government policies? Um, we've spoken a lot about monetary policy in one of the earlier videos. Um, this is probably, I think, the best way to, for the government to handle the, the economy is through monetary policy. Monetary policy is you know, where you set interest rates and you... Um, yeah, basically anything to do with the money supply. So printing money, um, buying securities, uh, selling securities, all that kind of stuff falls under the money supply. And monetary policy um, since 1970 was adopted by quite a few governments, which was great because it did allow for some great economic growth. So monetary policy, in my opinion, is good. But it is something that the government outsources to central banks who are supposed to be uh, independent. But since the government sets the directors, that independence is very much questionable. Okay, so what is another government policy? Well, another main one is something known as fiscal policy. Now, fiscal policy is bad. So this is what they were doing before the 1970s, um, mainly from, from Keynes uh, economy, uh, economics. Um, very much government, so monetary supply is government should control the supply of money and not intervene. Fiscal policy is that the government should basically be micromanaging the economy, controlling demand, cost, and um, you know, influencing a whole bunch of various things. So stuff that comes under, say, fiscal policy is um, setting of tax and public spending. So the government feels it's its objective to um, spend lots of money in order to stimulate the economy. Um, and the only way for them to spend money is if they raise tax. And this is where it gets kind of dumb. So what happens is when you increase tax, you reduce um, productivity. Okay, the reason being is that you reduce the, the reward, so the incentive has decreased for people to, to be productive, do business, all those, those type of things. So what the government says is, okay, well, since productivity is down and we have some money, we're going to use public spending, we're going to use public spending uh, we're going to increase that to increase the economy, okay? to increase product, uh, productivity. But you kind of see where the weird part comes in, is in order to do public spending, they need to have tax. So by increasing tax, um, they decrease productivity to only increase public spending to increase productivity. So the net effect sometimes is nothing changes to productivity 
or sometimes it could even decrease uh, productivity in the sense that if the tax is so high, it reduces productivity um, or the incentive for productivity, then it reduces. Then government thinks, okay, we need to spend more money, so let's raise taxes more so that we can spend more, increases productivity a little bit, but that increased tax burden decreases productivity even more. So, I mean, it's basically dumb. <laughs> no, I shouldn't be. This is not a lecture. This is, I'm, I'm a student. I'm studying for these exams. I'm not a lecturer. So don't take whatever I'm saying as fact. Uh, think about it yourself. But in, in my opinion, fiscal policy is kind of dumb. Um, you're public spending to increase productivity. But in order to do that, you have to raise taxes, which decreases productivity. So the net effect is kind of, yeah, just rather not do it. Leave productivity alone and focus on the monetary supply. Okay, so those are the two, but you can see that's what we were doing before the 1970s. In time, a species gets smart, says more knowledge is passed down. So we are being a little bit smart in that. Well, I mean, specifically first world countries, South Africa, South Africa's got a bit of a weird economy um, with regards to fiscal policy. Um, okay, what else does the government do? Uh, another interesting thing is this national debt management policy. So national debt management policy. Okay, what's interesting is that most governments in the world are in debt. Okay, that means most governments owe money to somebody else. Who do they own that money to? Well, the majority of the debt holders are pension funds whose members are the people of the world. So it's, it's quite weird. We, we kind of think of the government as you know being this big controlling force, yet it is the people who vote them in. It's the people who own their debt. So governments do need to be more... What can I say? They need to be nicer to their population in the sense that the population votes them in and controls their debt. But because government is a very concentrated, you know, few people with a lot of power compared to the general population, which is a lot of people with a little bit of power each, they can sometimes get away with some interesting policies. Uh, but yeah, national debt management policy is controlling the debt. Uh, debt basically comes down to... Um, exports minus imports. The idea being that if a country exports more than it imports, so if exports are larger, then the country is seen as rich or making a profit. And if imports are higher than exports, then the country is seen to be, you know, in debt and this is bad. I'm not so convinced on that such a standard thing. I think it's good for a country to have a little bit of debt. I think better to have debt than, say, surplus. Um, I mean, they can use the debt. They can manage it quite comfortably. You know, they can always adjust interest rates and, and they control the monetary supply. So debt can't really run away from them, except if they're a country like Greece who doesn't have control of their monetary supply. So... Oh, am I going back into opinion mode? But I kind of think monetary policy should be something that each government should control by themselves. So this whole European Union, where they kind of like centralize that, I don't think that's so good. So at my current standing, uh, I think Brexit is going to be, is not going to be as bad as everybody made it out to be. I think everyone's overreacted about Brexit and that it actually might be good for, for England in the long run. But that's just my opinion at where I... Look, I'm still in the beginning of my studying, so I might change my mind there. I feel uh, you can get in trouble for having an opinion on Brexit. majority of the world is against it. So, dangerous to have an opposing opinion. Uh, okay, but let's return back to, um, back to the work. So, yeah, the... the Government's national debt management policy. So, I mean, one thing it does here, which I think is also, again, really dumb, is that it taxes imports. So it wants to try and discourage imports. So it will tax that so that people buy local and stuff like that. The problem being 
is that other countries say, well, if you're taxing our imports, we're going to tax your exports. And whoop de doo we've got more tax on each of us, and this is bad. Remember, tax lowers productivity. That was maybe the one good thing about the, the EU is that they did have tax agreements. And I think that's what everybody is freaking out about around Brexit, is that with uh, England leaving uh, the European Union, will these tax agreements stay in place? And um, I think they will, because they're beneficial for both, both England and the European Union. I mean, tax is bad, so it would be better if they kept their tax agreements and didn't start taxing each other just because England's uh, gone out. Although that might be one of the main reasons for being in the European Union was the tax advantage. So that's going to be a very interesting thing to see is tax and how that plays out in the whole Brexit thing. Um, but I mean, otherwise, national debt management policy, it's, it's very simple. It's, it's economics. We should all be comfortable with that. Let's maybe move on to one that's a little bit more exciting or a little bit more challenging to, to understand, and that is exchange rate policy. Okay, exchange rates. Oh my gosh, these things are complicated. So exchange rate policy, and the reason why I say it's difficult is because there's nothing really you can peg your currency against. So I mean, when I'm comparing, say, rands, which is the currency of South Africa, to American dollars, it's not like, oh, I can keep checking rands to American dollars, and if rands is strengthened to dollars, it's doing well, or if it's weakened to dollars, it's doing badly. Because rands is a random variable, and the value of a dollar is also a random variable. So South Africa could do absolutely nothing wrong, and its currency can weaken to the dollar, and it can do nothing right, and its um, value can strengthen if the dollar weakens. And why this is bad is because now, say the government makes a policy, but something else happens in America, and it shows a favorable increase compared to what we were expecting the government policy to do, and it gets all terribly confusing. So it's very difficult to predict which way exchange rates are going to go. And um, that's why, I mean, we're going to be doing fundamental share analysis in the next video. But I kind of think that unless you have a really good understanding of government exchange rate policy, trying to make money in exchange rates or with Forex is very risky and it's very speculative. Um, but your exchange rate policy, oof, very difficult, very, very difficult. And what's interesting is exchange rates come and they play an important role with exports and imports. Um, the stronger your currency, the cheaper it is to import, and the less likely other countries are going to want to engage in your exports. So it does kind of mess that up a bit. I know China has got quite an aggressive um, you know, exchange rate policy. They want to keep their currency as low as possible um, so that they can export as much as possible. So it is a, it's an interesting thing, exchange rate policies. I mean, we could do an entire video on that as well. And then finally, let's look at something known as prices and income policy. Uh, prices and income policies. And this is where the government might say, okay, we're going to have a wage ceiling or we're going to have a minimum wage um, or they, they try and make these interventions, these uh, laws around um, prices and incomes. And I mean, anyone I think who, who studies economics and they do those little graphs, they show that whenever the government intervenes here, though it's got a good policy, it's got good intentions, it's got devastating effects in the economy. Um, I mean, one classic thing is setting a minimum wage. So a minimum wage is set to protect the, the workers. It's set so that um, everybody gets a fair amount of money in order to live life, standard of living, all these type of things. So minimum wage, in theory, is brilliant. And I think it's very good because corporations, it stops corporations from exploiting their workforce and all these type of things. 
So minimum wage has got a good intention behind it. However, it has the unfortunate consequence of you know, increasing unemployment. And why it increases unemployment is because people now say, well, before it costs, say, 200 rand an hour to employ someone to, to do this job, now it costs 300 rand. Um, maybe if I'm only making 250 rand profit off of this, at 300 rand, it's not actually profitable for me to do it anymore, and I'm rather just going to walk away from this business arrangement. And so productivity comes down. People who might be prepared to work for 200 rand cannot legally work for a wage less than the minimum wage. So those people are unemployed, productivity is decreased, and it does have this undesirable effect. Does that mean we should scrap minimum wage? I don't think so. I, don't, I think minimum wage from a, a social policy is, is a very good thing. We do want to uh, prevent capitalists from exploiting the people, but I feel we need to explore other ways of trying to get that rather than intervening in the economy or setting a rule or regulation of this nature. Um, how else we could do it? I mean, you could do public shaming on Facebook saying, oh, look at this company, they pay below this amount, shame on them, or they exploited their workers, and then maybe, you know, throw in that whole reputation risk. But there's some companies who are maybe too small to care about their reputation, and people might not actually, I don't know, it's, it's very difficult, it's it's going into something else. Um, I mean, so yeah, the government has got quite a big influence on the economy and especially what its mindset is, what type of government party. Because remember, one year it might be one party, another time it might be another party, you know, maybe a capitalist party or a socialist party. And then they'll have different rules, different regulations. Some are good for the people, some are good for the markets. And it does tend to fluctuate quite a lot. Um, I mean... I can do another whole video on, you know, because governments are very much involved in setting of the interest rates and interest rates impact everything. I mean, every single asset's value changes once you change the interest rates. So that's got a massive effect and it is something that the government, along with the central bank, um, have a lot of influence over. But I think let's rather do another whole video on that or I'll come across that later in the course once we've got a little bit more foundational uh, knowledge. But there we go, this is government and they've got monetary policy, fiscal policy, national debt management policy, exchange rate policy, and prices and income policy. And there we go, that's the end of the video. Like I said, next up is fundamental share analysis. That should be quite a fun video, so subscribe if you want to listen to that one as well. That'll come out tomorrow. Cheers.